Are you retiring soon? You want to do this now, especially if you're thinking about retiring in the next 6, 12, 18, or 24 months. Now, most Americans say they now need $1.25 million in retirement savings in order to retire comfortably. Now, that's not to retire, but that is to retire comfortably. $1.25 million saved for retirement. That's actually a 20% increase year over year from last year. 20% increase from retirement savings year over year. $1.25 million is what most Americans believe that they need to retire comfortably. And the average retirement savings has dropped 11% from $98,000 average saved to $86,000 saved for retirement. And the average retirement age has risen from 62 to 64. So Americans now say they need $1.25 million to retire. The average retirement savings in America is $86,000. Now, it's actually much less than that. That's the average. If you look at the median, you're looking more in the thirties and $40,000 range. And the retirement age has risen from age 62 to 64. So what can you do to retire. What do you need to be doing now if you want to retire? Well, we're going to talk about three things that you need to be doing right now if you want to retire. Number one is continuing to, con to, continuing to contribute to your retirement accounts. Number two, we're going to talk about this in a little bit more depth. Reassess your stock market risk, your market investments. And number three, do the dirty work. Yeah, do the dirty work when it comes to your retirement planning, Roth conversions, tax planning, understanding your social security maximization. Understand when am I going to claim social security? But before we get into all that, I want to go through some statistics from a recent survey that I found extremely interesting. And I want to pull this up and add this to the stream. This is actually from Northwestern Mutual. And let me see, where did you go? Here we go. Northwestern Mutual. Now, this study finds that Americans now believe they need $1.25 million in order to retire comfortably. Now, this came out October 25th of this year, of 2022. So if you're watching this in 23 or 24, it's probably gone up since then. And the anticipated retirement age has climbed from 626 to 64 years old. People are understanding that based on market losses and market volatility, they're having to work longer or they're trying to get closer to their full retirement age with Social Security so they can claim that and get their full retirement benefit. Remember, when you claim Social Security less than your full retirement age, you're going to get a reduced benefit. So when you look at your statement on ssa.gov, your full retirement age, and let's say for this video at 67, at 67, you will get 100% of your full retirement benefit if you claim for Social Security at 67. If you claim it at 62, you're only going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. And you wait If you wait till 70 or above 67 or above your full retirement age, you will get an increased benefit from Social Security. So at 68, 69, at 70, it's actually 124% of your full retirement benefit. So we see from the study that more people are now delaying retirement. They're delaying uh, claiming Social Security. They're saving more money now because of inflation, market volatility, and really what's going on, some of the uncertainties out there in the economic world. And as you can see here, we just talked about this at the same time. So most Americans think we need $1.25 million to retire comfortably. At the same time, Americans' average retirement savings has dropped 11% from 98800 
to 86,869. We've talked about this on a lot of recent live streams. Go back to some of those recent live streams where we've talked about what is the average and the median retirement savings. We looked at Vanguard and Fidelity last week. Two different numbers from two different custodians. We looked at that last week, and that'll show you what the average and the median. Remember, the average, when you're looking at averages, like the average retirement or the average save for retirement is skewed because you've got a lot of people at the top and you've got a lot of zeros at the bottom. So you've got these high numbers and these zeros, and when they average it out, it's not necessarily a true middle number. What the median does is it takes everybody and goes, boop, right in the middle. And so that is more like thirty to forty thousand dollars saved for retirement instead of this eighty six eight sixty nine. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing less money saved for retirement. We're seeing people having to work longer or delay their retirement longer. You know, I do a lot of videos. Can I retire? And you know, people are saying, Hey, Drew, can I retire at fifty five? Can I retire at fifty eight? And you know, I'm having to give a lot of answers like, Well. No, we can't retire at those ages because of this, because you're one, you don't have enough in retirement savings to last for 30 years of retirement, or it makes more sense for you to continue working and adding to your 401ks and claiming social security at a later age, or, you know, working longer is going to help you just from a tax standpoint, being able to put more money away, do the conversions. So there's a lot of things going on today that is causing people to delay their retirement. That's why we do the EKGs here to make sure we do a financial EKG, we call that's our financial plan, but we make that, we want to make sure that people can get to retirement through retirement and protect their ability to stay in retirement. And, and these numbers, you know, these are, um, you know, don't give us a lot of confidence uh, here in America. So what we've seen is Christian Mitchell says this, he says, it's a period of uncertainty for many people driven largely by rising inflation and volatility in the markets. Four in 10 people don't think they'll be ready to retire. That's what we're going to talk about on this live stream. Are you retiring soon? When are you going to retire? Hey, leave it in the comments. When do you want to retire? Four in 10 people think they will not be ready to retire. Four in 10, 43% of people say they do not expect to be financially ready for retirement when that time comes. Four in 10. I know four in 10 Sounds low, right? But that's 40%. 40% of Americans don't believe they'll be financially ready for retirement when that time comes. And 45% say they can, they can imagine a time when Social Security no longer exists. Now, we're not going to get into Social Security and is it going to be around when you get to retirement. But the thing that, that really strikes me here is that four in, 10, four in 10 surveyed Americans don't think they'll be ready to retire. And one third of Americans, one third of those same surveyed Americans, they expect to live to 100. And 33% predicting there's a better than 50% chance they might outlive their savings. So think about this. Let's go back to the top for a minute. Most surveyed Americans believe they need $1.25 million to retire comfortably. The average retirement savings today is $86,869. Well off $1.25 million, okay? You come down here, one third of Americans expect to live to 100. We're going to be in retirement a lot longer than our parents and our grandparents because of health care, because we understand how to eat, to exercise, to lift weights. And so if we're going to live longer, we've got to have the retirement savings, the retirement income, the retirement investments that's going to take us from age whatever we want to retire. First shot, first, first shot says 55. So if he's going to retire at 55, He's got to have the retirement savings to go from 55 to not just 85. That's the mortality tables for men and women, kind of like 85 years old. How about 95? How about 105? So we've got to have almost 40 to 50 years of retirement savings in order to get through retirement. Four in 10 people, 43% of people say they do not expect to be financially ready for retirement when that time comes, when that time comes, 
we want to be financially ready. So what are some steps that people are doing? 36% of people, one in three, said they have proactive or they have not proactively taken steps to address this concern. But there are people that are taking steps. So what are people doing to help themselves with their retirement savings? Well, 25% of those surveyed are increasing their savings, which is a great thing to do. If you have the ability to increase your retirement savings, increase your retirement contribution, increase the money that you're putting into your taxable brokerage account, do that. And what I always tell people, the first thing you want to do, especially when you're building out your retirement plan, if you've got six, 12, 18, 24 months before you retire, you need to be you need to be looking at your budget. And yeah, I know budget's a dirty word and only Dave Ramsey says budget, but you want to look at your budget and understand what money's coming in and what money's going out. Because we want to look at that and say, okay, are there some areas that we can adjust? Are there some areas that we can maybe change? Can we increase our contributions to our 401ks, our IRAs, our Roth IRAs, our taxable brokerage accounts? Maybe there's some streaming services that you don't watch that you can get rid of. You know, uh, one of my clients told me they got rid of all their cable because uh, it was costing too much and they bought one of those antenna things. And so they get all their local channels that just what they need. Now, they're not huge sports fans or anything like that. So they don't need ESPN and some of the other sports networks. Like I need the sports networks, but they're happy. They, they cut down their $150 cable cost to a $25 antenna. And so for them, that's extra money that they can put towards their retirement savings. And you might think, oh, Drew, it's only $50 to $100 a month. That's a big deal. That'll add up to a lot of money, especially if you've got 5, 10, 15, 20 years left before you retire. Now, other steps taken to address the possibility of outliving your savings. Remember, thir listen, one third of Americans expect to live to 100 with another equal third predicting there's a better than 50% chance they may outlive their savings. So what are people doing to not outlive their savings? Well, number one, they're increasing their savings. They're looking for ways to increase that. Number two, they're putting together a financial plan. 22% of those surveyed are putting together a financial plan. I love this answer because I'm a financial planner. That's my selfish, it's my selfish answer because I'm a financial planner and I love to put together financial plans. And we're actually going to go through a little bit of a financial plan towards the end of this live stream. But having some sort of plan, whether that's software that you use through Fidelity, through Charles Schwab, through Vanguard, personal capital, whether you use an actual financial advisor, an investment advisor to put your plan together, an Excel spreadsheet. You want to have some sort of financial plan, and it needs to cover very specific areas. If you're going to have a financial plan, it needs to cover, one, when am I going to retire? It needs to cover, two, when am I going to claim Social Security? Number three, how much retirement income am I going to need in retirement? Number four, do we have pensions or any other form of income coming in when we're, retirement, when we're retired? How much in retirement savings do we have now? And how much in retirement savings will we have when we retire? So you want to put together a financial plan. Now, that's just a basic financial plan because you want to look at projections and you want to look at taxes and you want to look at RMDs and you want to look at any kind of extra cash flows that you might want to do in retirement, like travel or you know pay for a child's wedding or whatever you want to do, buy a car. Another step that people have taken to not outlive their saving is they've purchased investments. Now, this purchasing of investments could be rental property. It could be uh, extra mutual funds or ETFs. It could be anything that is helping them get closer to retirement. Todd Hallam says this, I'm 57 and I would love to retire today. Todd, wouldn't we all? We all want to retire today. Thank you so much for your comment. Another thing that people are doing to address the possibility of outliving their savings, they've discussed options with their family and they've sought advice from an advisor, 18% on both these. You know, my dad and I wrote a book called, Have You Ever Been Bitten by an Elephant? My dad's been a financial advisor for 50 years. And we wrote a book together called, Have You Ever Been Bitten by an Elephant? And the reason we called it, Have You Ever Been Bitten by an Elephant? I don't know if I have it on my bookshelf back there. I don't have it on my bookshelf, but the reason we called it that is because most people have not been bitten by an elephant, right? They've been bitten by a mosquito, right? Mosquitoes give you a little bump on your end. You just kind of scratch, scratch. In Florida, mosquitoes are our state birds, okay? 
you you would think it would be some other and I don't even know what our state bird is in Florida, but it should be mosquitoes and seagulls, right? The squirrels of the sea, a seagull and mosquitoes. But when mosquitoes bite you, they itch and they cause problems. And if you let those problems, you know, uh, fester and materialize, they could become even worse. And so when you are going into retirement, when you're doing your retirement planning, there's all these little mosquito bites that you want to make sure that you take care of like your tax planning, like your Roth conversions, like when am I going to claim Social Security? How am I invested in retirement? And if you don't take care of them, they can become bigger issues. But I digress because in the book, we say one of the mistakes that individuals make, especially in retirement and in their retirement planning, is they talk too much to their neighbors. And the reason we say that is and, and we kind of say it tongue in cheek, right? We want you to talk to your family and talk to people who have wisdom. You know, the Bible says to go get, you know, talk to people who have wisdom, gain wisdom. Well, the reason we say that is a lot of times what's going on in your neighbor's world is different from what's going on in your world. What's going on in your retirement is different from what's going on in someone else's retirement. I have a client right now and she has a life insurance policy. OK, she's 81 years old and she has this life insurance policy and her her tax account about 12 years ago told her that she needed to get this life insurance policy. And she asked him, why do I need this life insurance policy? And he said, you need this policy because I have it. And so she got this life insurance policy. She's paying four thousand dollars a year for it. And every year because she's getting older and because her RMDs are getting longer and because her assets aren't necessarily one, $2 million, that $4,000 becomes a lot of money to continue to pull out and to pay for life insurance. Now she's 81. She has no debt. Her kids are all grown. Why does she need life insurance? Why does she need a whole life insurance policy? The, the policy doesn't have any living benefits, so you can't use it for long-term care and can't use it for like there's no cash value in it because it's all built for death benefit. But what happened to her? She talked to her tax account who who, you know, gave her this answer and said, you need to do this because I'm doing it. So just that's my advice before you, when you're talking to your friends and you're talking to uh, your neighbors. So steps taken to address the possibility of outliving your savings. Sought advice from advisor. 18 percent have done that. That's me. I love that answer. Purchased insurance, 16% have purchased insurance to address the possibility of outliving their savings, things like that, purchasing insurance. A lot of times people will buy annuities, uh, what they call single premium income annuities to help uh, sure up their income or a deferred income annuity where you put money in and you take income out at a later date. Be careful with annuities. I'm just telling you what the survey says. And 36% of people, this is what's big, 36% of people have not taken any steps to address the possibility of outliving their savings. And here's what's crazy about that. Remember, 33% of Americans predicted there's a better than 50% chance, 50, that they may outlive their savings. And of those, 36% aren't even taking any steps to address the possibility of running out of savings. Uh, retired 219, retired 2019. Herb says this. I retired three years ago, five days before my 57th birthday. Now I'm thinking it's time to find a part time job. There's a lot of people are doing that. A lot of my clients have decided to start working part time. And it's not because it's not because they need necessarily the money. A lot of it's just to help with the gap, especially with where the market's at. You know, we had 10 years of a market averaging 15 and a half percent returns until this year, until 2022. And because of that, uh, our retirement savings have been, you know, we the 60-40 portfolio, which was supposed to be, you know, the portfolio that everybody was in, 60% equities, 40% bonds, has had the worst uh, returns in over a century. Bonds have gone down. Stocks have gone down. Crypto, man, crypto has gone down, crashed. Real estate. So, I mean, you've got this thing where everything is going down. Baby with the bathwater. And so a lot of individuals are taking some part-time jobs to just help bridge the gap so they don't have to pull as much money out of their retirement investing accounts. And it's really good when you're young enough to be able to do that because what you don't want to do is you don't want to get to 80 or 85 or 90 and run out of money. 
It's a lot harder to get a part-time job at 80, 85, and 90. So if you can work, if you, if you retire from your current job because it's just 40, 50 hours a week and, it's, and you're tired of it, but you can go work part-time somewhere, you know, 10, 15 hours, whatever, that's going to help you in your retirement income. I've got a lot of clients that work part-time. We have spring training down here in Florida, you know, for baseball. A lot of clients will work spring training or they'll work at the zoo or they work at the Bucks games, whatever. It's just to help bridge the gap for their retirement income. Okay. A lot of people are working longer. The average American now plans to work until age 64 up from 62.6 last year, two year increase in just a one year year market return. So, I mean, a lot of this is just, you can go on Northwestern Mutual. I got this off of Northwestern Mutual. It's their uh, study that you can just type this in literally. Northwestern Mutual study finds Americans now believe they need 1.25 million for comfortable retirement. Read through that. It's a very, very interesting um, survey. And it leads us into really what we're going to talk about today, which is what you need to be doing if you are going to retire soon. If you're thinking about retiring the next 6, 12, 18, or 24 months, what do you need to be doing? Well, the first thing you need to be doing is you need to continue contributing to your retirement accounts. If you've got a 401k, an IRA, a Roth IRA, a brokerage account, you want to continue contributing to those accounts. Um, 2023. So we're, we're 2022 right now. If you look at, let me pull up this. This is the 401k limit increases for, for this is the IRS website. You can just Google this. Now I save everything as a PDF for the live stream. So you can just Google this and you can find these, but here are some highlights for 2023. The contribution limit for employees who participate in 401k, 403b, most 457 plans, and the federal government's TSP plan is increased to 22500 up from 20500 So it's a $2,500 increase in the contributions that you can make into your 401k. And the limit on annual contributions to an IRA increased to 6,500 up from 6,000. We actually didn't see an increase on IRAs last year, um, which was surprising because they use some kind of like formula. I don't know what formula the IRS, I think the IRS just goes like, okay, this is what we're going to increase it by. Um, If you know the exact formula, leave that in the comment section. But um, they use a formula that's different for 401ks and IRAs. Again, Um, and so the IRA, we actually have an increase from 6,000 to 6,500. The IRA catch-up contribution for ages 50 and over, uh, has now increased by a thousand and for catch-up contributions for 401ks, it's $7,500 up from $6,500. So you want to continue to contribute to your IRA, to your 401k, to your Roth IRA, and to your taxable brokerage accounts. I talk about this a lot on the live streams and in videos. If you have the ability, if you're putting money into a 401k, a Roth 401k, an IRA, a Roth IRA, if you're maxing those out or you're putting in um, up to the match, if you have a 401k, a 403b, uh, TSP, whatever, make sure you're putting at least enough in those accounts to get the match. Okay, you want to get that match from the employer. That's free money. Get that match. But you can also take extra money and put that into a brokerage account. It doesn't have to go into uh, an IRA or a 401k or a Roth. I have a lot of people who call me and say, hey, Drew, uh, I want to open up a Roth IRA. And I'll say, great. Why? Why do you want to open up a Roth IRA? And they say, well, it's tax free growth. And I'll say, that, that's great. It's great. Why do you want to open up a Roth IRA? Well, I can put money in. It's going to be tax-free. I can use it. And I'll say, okay, well, how old are you? And they'll say, well, I'm 57. I go, okay, how long are you going to work? I'm going to work a couple years. I say, okay, so you're going to work to 60 and you want to open a Roth IRA. I said, listen, I think you're on, I think you're on the right path, but how about we do this? How about instead of opening a Roth IRA, how about we open a taxable brokerage account? And let's just put the money into the brokerage account. Because that way you can, there's no income, there's no, first of all, there's no income limit. You can make as much money in your job as you want. There's no contribution limit, meaning 
If you want to put in more than $6,500 or more than $7,500 if you're over the age of 50, do it. You can put in as much as you want. And hey, if at 59 you decide to retire or at 58 you decide to retire a little early, you can pull money out of there for retirement income and not have to worry about a penalty from the IRS. So if you have the ability to put money into a taxable brokerage account, I encourage you to do that. Fast Eddie says only 4.7% of people make it to the age of 90. I think that's going to increase, Fast Eddie. I think we're going to see that increase over the next 10, 15, 20, 25 years. I mean, I think with health increases, I've seen it in my own life. You know, I go, I went to the doctor maybe a decade, uh, let's see, seven years ago, seven years ago. And uh, they said, I have high cholesterol. It's genetic, runs in the family. Okay. They said, you have genetically high cholesterol. And I said, okay, what can I do about it? Uh, well, they said, there's not a lot you can do about it. You can take this, you can take the statin. And I said, oh, before I get on medicine, let me try something else. Not that I'm against medicine. Don't get me wrong. And uh, so I started changing my diet. I started working. I mean, I started working out. Um, and I mean, I don't look like the rock, but I started working out and I started exercise, I started eating right. And I got my cholesterol down below 200. I was at like 240, 260, something like that. And I got it all the way down to 170. So Fast Eddie, I think we're going to see, Fast Eddie says only 4.7% of people make it to the age 90. I think we're going to see a lot more people make it past 90. And so that's why it's important in your financial plan to make sure that you are planning for a longer than anticipated retirement. Retired 2019. Thank you so much for the um, contribution to the channel. And uh, I do love helping other people and I love, love doing these live streams. Hey, make sure if you have any questions, if you have anything you want to talk about, leave that in the comments. We're talking about retiring soon. What to do now? We just went through a whole PDF of what people believe they need to have in retirement savings to retire to, to retire comfortably. That's 1.25 million. We've talked about what the average retirement savings is today, which is 86,000. So 86,000 is what most people got saved. 1.25 million is what they need. There's a big gap there. So what do you need to do if you if you're retiring soon? Well, continue contributing to your retirement accounts. Don't give up. Don't let the market stop you from contributing. We talked about on our last live stream, Charles Schwab. Uh, did a survey where people are actually stopping or lowering their contributions into their 401ks. Listen, don't do that. That's the worst mistake you can make. Continue contributing to your IRA and to your 401k. Keep doing that. Now, I don't want you eating rice and beans or spam unless you like spam. Jim Cramer, he likes spam. But I don't want you to, to go without because you're putting money in your 401k, right? We've got to live life, take care of your family, Take care of your bills, take care of your credit card debt, take care of any student loan debt, take care of your kids, do that. But if all that's taken care of, and if it's fear that's keeping you from putting money in the market, stop that. Put the money into the, your retirement plans. Put the money in your 401ks. Put the money. Let me show you something. Now, now you got me. Now, listen, look, look what you did. You got me off track. You got me thinking about people start thinking about being scared. And I go, listen, guys, the market is the greatest wealth creator that the world has ever seen. And in order for you, I mean, I, I get there's other investments out there. I know that there's people that say that real estate's the only way to go. Uh, rich dad, poor dad, I, don't, I can't think of his name right now. You know, real estate's the only way to go. The stock market's whatever. Let me tell you something. A lot of people have become comfortably, have comfortable in retirement have, and have retired early because of the stock market. So let's look at this real quick. I want to show you, let me see. I wasn't actually planning. I have a notes section here and this was not in my notes, but let me show you this. Here's why you want to continue contributing into your retirement accounts. This is a chart of the S&P 500, okay? I want you to check out the date, 1928, and we're going to go all the way to today, okay? So let's back up, back, 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 gone! So here's 1928. Here's the Great Depression. We struggled. World War II brought us out of the Great Depression. We had the Eisenhower years that did really well. 1950, into the 60s. High inflation. There's 74 where the market dropped 40%. A lot of this is what's going on right now. High inflation, economic stagflation. 
Here we go into the 80s, the Reagan years, the 90s, the Clinton years. Here's the tech bubble. Boom. Here's the collapse, the housing market collapse. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. COVID, 2020. Where's the Greek crisis? Greek crisis. And then first rate increases right there. COVID. And then here we are today, right here. But I want you to notice something. Where's the S&P? 4,084. 4,084. Now go back. Where are we at? Here we go. 1999. 1356. Oh, let me grab my calculator. 4,000. Where are we at today? 4,076. Subtract. Where's it at in 99? Let's just use 1491. Divide that into 1491. Oops. 4,076 minus 1491. We're up over 63%. I think there's a reason to keep keep investing. I mean, what and what I always tell people too is think about this with the market. Always contribute. Because what's going on in the news today is not unusual from what's happened in the past. People say, oh, it's all new, Drew. You don't understand. You know, all this is new. No. In the 1970s, we had high inflation. Here's the 1970s. Let me show you this. Here's the 1970s. Okay, 68 was when you know we started to realize we had some inflation issues right there. Here's the 1970s. We didn't get under control until about 82, 82, 83. Look at that. And so the market, I mean, essentially, where was it at in 68? 89 and a half. And in 80, we're at 102. Didn't move a whole lot, but it did move up. But what I also tell people to think about is this. What have we experienced as a country when it comes to the stock market over the last 100 years? Or let's say 150 years. We've experienced, I just went through it all. We experienced a Great Depression. We experienced World War I. We experienced World War II. We've experienced presidents getting stuck in a bathtub. We've experienced assassinations of our presidents, attempted assassinations of our presidents. We've seen tech bubbles. We've seen Black Monday. We've seen uh, a credit crisis like the world has never seen before in the Great Recession. We've seen um, COVID. We've seen what we're going through now, high inflation. We've seen uh, governments cooed in other countries, and the market continues to move higher. So I say all that to say this. Point number one, what you need to be doing, what you need to continue doing, keep investing in your retirement accounts, especially if you're retiring soon. Continue contributing. 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs, and brokerage accounts. Number two, what do you need to do now if you are retiring soon, reassess your stock market risk. And the reason I say that, I'm not telling you to get out of the stock market, but I really want you to take a fine tooth comb to your retirement investments. Scott Eastland says this, if you haven't had your financial EKG, EKG yet, you should start planning now. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate that. Yes, if you haven't had a financial EKG yet, you should start planning now. You can get in touch with me in the description below. Would love to go through an EKG with you and uh, make sure you can get to retirement, get through retirement and protect your ability to stay in retirement. So we want to reassess our stock market risk, especially if we are retiring soon. Why do we want to reassess our stock market risk? Well, the first reason is when we step into retirement, there's a risk called the sequence of return risk. And what the sequence of return risk is, is that it's the risk that when you enter into retirement, the first few years, the market is going to be negative. And so if you're using your retirement investments to live off of, you're using it for retirement income and the market's going down, you're pulling retirement income from an investment that's losing money. So when that investment starts to come back up, you're still pulling money out of it. And so it's got to work 
double, triple, quadruple time just to get back. It's almost like a hamster wheel, right? You're pulling money out on the way down and you're pulling it out on the way up. And a lot of times in order to get back to here, it's not going to make that that swoosh back up. And, and let me show you what I mean by that. So when we do a financial EKG for a client, we do a historical market analysis. And what the historical market analysis allows me to do is it allows me to look at the client's um, returns. So it allows me to look at their retirement income plan and say, OK, if we have a geometric return, meaning we just earn, in this case, 5.12 percent for the rest of their retirement or somewhere around 5 percent. When are they going to run out of money? So in this case, this gal never runs out of money. At 100, how old is she? 53. So this is Marie. Marie's 53. At 100, she never runs out. Okay, just earning 5, 5.25% is basically what she's earned. Okay, but sequence of return risk is not included with this because this is just a geometric return. She's just getting 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Give me 5, give me 5, give me 6, 6, 6, give me 7, 6, give me 8. So she's just getting five. So over here, we do a market comparison. And so what I always like to do is the year 2000, because the year 2000 is the worst decade for I, 2000, 2010. The market was like negative three. So that's the worst decade I remember. I wasn't alive during the Great Depression. My grandfather was born in 27. So I wasn't alive in, when the Great Depression happened. I wasn't alive in the 70s. So in the year 2000, 2010, the market was a negative three. So I want to look at that and go, OK, what would have happened if your nine hundred and two thousand dollars was invested in the year 2000? So we look at her. We look at her plan and the sequence of return risk is right here. Negative 10, negative 13 and negative 23. She still needs retirement income in these years. She's 53. We're not to Social Security yet. She actually has a pension at 55. We're not there yet. So we have these negative years. Here's 2007 and eight. When are we out of money now? Well, in this case, we're out of money at 82. It's basically a million four difference between the geometric return and the sequence of return risk. So we look at that and we say, OK, we're, what needs to be adjusted here? So let's go back. Let's take this to 1968. Again, I always go back to 68. And the reason I do that until someone tells me different, that's the, the decade. I'm trying to mirror 68 to 82. Because that's the last time we had high inflation. We had an oil crisis. You know, we, you, you hear about oil crises right now. We just depleted the strategic reserve. Um, so we need to kind of, I'm not saying history is going to repeat, but it does rhyme, right? It does kind of rhyme. So if we look at 1968, we go to this and I say, okay, when are we out of money here? Boom, 84. So using that sequence of return risk, She's out at 84. So we have to be acutely aware of that. So when we're going into retirement, when we're, when we're retiring soon, 6, 12, 18, 24 months, we want to continue contributing to our retirement accounts. But we have to be aware of the risk that's lurking in our market investments. I'm 36 years old. I'll be 37 in 23 days, December 24th. Make sure you send me a gift. I'm just kidding. You can send me an email or comment on the YouTube page. But um, I'm 36. I'll be 37. My investments, we talked about this on the last live stream. I mean, like majority of it is, is S&P 500 or some kind of equity, right? Walmart, Apple, Caterpillar, some kind of stock or the S&P 500. I'm trying to grow. My wife is 32. So we're trying to grow our assets as much as possible. That's what we want to do. Over the next, how many years? 30 years? I put me at 60 something. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to retire, especially if I, with clients. But let's say 30 years. If you are stepping into retirement, if you're 57, 58, 59, you're like, I'm retiring next year. I'm retiring in January, this, whatever. You don't want to be investing like me because what's the market done? The market has killed your retirement plans. I've had two financial EKGs in the last six months. One, I did a video on, I had a client um, who was 51 and before the crash had close to a million dollars in retirement savings and he wanted to retire. And based on his budget and based on his spending and his standard of life and when he was going to claim Social Security, he could do it. But that was previous 
to 2022. Because in 2022, the market was down essentially, what, like 28% at one point. And so he lost a lot of money. And the way he was invested was for more growth and for more accumulation. And so because of that, he lost a lot of his retirement savings. Now, we have to work longer. He's 51. Now he's got to work longer and make that up in order to retire. And it doesn't mean he has to work to 65. He's going to have to work for another couple of years. But he didn't reassess the stock market risk when he wanted to retire. Another client I just uh, I talked to recently, they've invested super aggressively. And because of that, they've made a lot of money between 2019 and 2021. I'm talking like more aggressive than me. OK, and I'm pretty aggressive. I mean, super aggressive. But when the market came down, they fell a lot. And I'm talking double the market. And so their retirement plans have shifted because of how they're invested. And so you really want to be aware, one, of sequence of return risk. And you want to be aware of how you are investing. One of the rules of thumbs in financial planning is to have a cash cushion. You know, if you're thinking about retiring soon and you need $50,000 a year in retirement income, you want to have a cash cushion of one or two years. Why one or two years? Well, if the market goes down, let's go back. Look at this. So this is 1968. So 68, 69, market was down 11%. If you had a cash cushion, you could actually use that cash cushion for these two years for retirement income and not touch your liquid retirement investments. And then as the market recovered, 10%, 15% here, you can replenish your cash cushion. And then we had the negative 17, negative 29. You use your cash cushion again, 31 and 19, you can replenish. So having a cash cushion is really important, especially when you're thinking about stepping into retirement. Now, when I say cash, don't think like in the mattress. Don't think like in your savings account, in your bank account. When I say cash cushion, with today's interest rates, it could be treasury bonds. It could be money market accounts. It could be high yield savings accounts. It could be CDs. We have a unique opportunity that we have not had in 15 years of my financial planning career of being able to invest in higher interest bearing safe assets, bank, uh, CDs, high yield savings accounts. I think I saw Marcus um, with Goldman Sachs was like 3% or something for a high yield savings account. 3%. That's really good. I mean, that's better than point zero nothing. I'm getting at Bank of America. Brian Moynihan, I'm talking to you. So if you have got cash, if you're thinking about going into retirement, you want to have a cash cushion. The cash cushion could be in your bank account, your savings account if you want. CDs, treasury bonds. And I'm not talking about ETFs or mutual funds because ETFs and mutual funds, bond ETFs, bond mutual funds, they can move. They're vol I mean, they can move with the markets and they can move. I'm talking owning the physical treasury, owning a physical CD, high yield savings accounts, things like that. So reassess your stock market risk. If you're thinking about going into retirement, you want to reassess your stock market risk, the sequence of return risk, cash cushions, one to two years. And I want to talk about maybe, con I call it concreting your income. So in retirement, there's a few concretes, right? You've got from an income standpoint, you've got social security, that's as concrete as I can say right now. Obviously, 2033, 2034, things could change and that could change. But Social Security is technically a guaranteed pension right now. You have pensions. Maybe you work for the federal, the state, local government, or, or you work at a business that still gives pensions. God bless you for that. That's awesome. But you also need to look at other forms of guaranteed income. And this is if you feel like you haven't saved enough or you want to take the risk of running out of retirement income off the table. And ways to do that are twofold. One, we just talked about using bonds. We're starting to see interest rates. Uh, you can build a bond ladder. And really, it's a short-term bond ladder because interest rates on the short term right now. And, then, and I'm, it's December 1st of 2022. So 
if you're watching this in 23, 24, 25, it might, it might have changed. But on the short end of the bond line, or the bond scale right now, you can get some pretty good interest when it comes to guarantees. Let me see if I can pull up for you guys a bond treasury yield curve here real quick. Let me pull this over here so I can see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, let me share my screen here. And Greg, drink a tea. Taz OT. We got Walmart green tea and Taz O orange tea. Man, it's a good mix. So here is the, this is the Y charts daily treasury yield curve rates. And if you look at this, you can see one month treasury bill, 4.07%, 4% on a one month treasury bill. 10 year treasury rate, 3.68. Two-year treasury rate, 4.38. You know, we talk about the 4% rule. You know, if I take 4% off of my retirement investments, sorry about that. Let me, I was going to block that person in uh, the comment section. We talk about the 4% rule. If you have a two-year treasury rate paying you 4.38%, there you go. Now, I'm not telling you to put all your money in that. But what I'm saying is that's a way to concrete some of your income. Now, you've got to buy the treasuries directly. So we use, so TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab are our custodians for our clients. We do wealth management. And so we buy these directly for clients. Now, I don't, you might have to go to treasurydirect.gov if you're a DIYer and do it. Or I don't know if you're a custodian, Fidelity, Vanguard, whatever you might have to call in order to do that. But you can actually get some pretty good interest. Look at this, six-month treasury rate, 4.7%. Five years at 3.82. Now, I know that's it's actually an inverted curve, but you can build yourself a bond ladder and basically get some guaranteed income for a short term time frame. And then once that time frame shifts, so let's say you build a bond ladder up until a two year treasury. So up until this 4.38. Well, hopefully by the time two years rolls around, interest rates have become more normalized. And so you can build a new bond ladder and possibly go out even longer to get longer interest in a longer time frame. I'm mean, sorry, more interest over a longer time frame. So that's one way to concrete your income, because what we're trying to do is reassess our market risk. Look, treasuries are the safe inv safest investment in the world, right? They're backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Now, I realize that we are $31 trillion in debt. But if you ask me if I wanted to buy guilds over in the United Kingdom or if I wanted to buy the bonds of France or the bonds of Japan or uh, Chinese bonds, I would say no. I would still take United States Treasuries over any other bond out there. And so it's a way to get some concrete guaranteed interest. The other way is to do it through uh, an income annuity. And we talked a little bit about this in the, in the beginning of the uh, live stream is using like a single premium income annuity, they call them SPIAs, where you put money in and it pays you an income right away, or a deferred income annuity, where you put money in and it pays you income at a later time. Now, I'm not talking about um, variable annuities or indexed annuities or any kind of fancy things that have fees and, and all this other stuff. I'm just talking about simple, you know, using insurance to your advantage. You put a certain amount of money in, it pays you income for the rest of your life or for you and your spouse. We're trying to use it to guarantee some income because we got Social Security, pensions, and we're trying to do something else to guarantee some income so that even if we run out of liquid assets, we still have our income coming in every month. A lot of times I'll show you guys in a video or, or through a live stream, I'll say, this person's out of money at this age. Well, they're not necessarily out of money. They're out of liquid assets, right? They can't go to their bank. They still get social security. They still get their pension. If they have an annuity payment coming in, they still get that, but they don't have um, liquid assets still there. And so that's why I want to reassess our stock market risk because I want our liquid retirement assets to be there. And I want us to have guaranteed income. All right. I got about 10 minutes because I have a three o'clock Eastern time call. So number three, first thing we want to do, if you're retiring now, you're retiring soon. First thing, continue contributing to your retirement accounts. Number two, reassess 
your stock market risk. And last but not least is do the dirty work. What do I mean? Do the dirty work. I mean, do the things that other people aren't going to do before they retire. Do the Roth conversions. Look at a Roth conversion calculator. Does it make sense for you to do a Roth conversion? How much in taxes would you pay if you did a Roth conversion? Let me show you this. This is a Roth conversion calculator. Now, you can find these on a lot of websites. I'm using Charles Schwab. That's our custodian, so it's easy for me to find. It's Vanguard, Fidelity. I'm sure you can find this on a lot of different websites. But <clears throat> I like this. It's simple for me. I'm from Kentucky. I like simple, okay? I do wear shoes, and I did not marry my sister, but I like simple, okay? So we think about this. If we're doing a Roth conversion, I want to know how much taxes we're going to pay when we're going to do it. So this is a Roth conversion calculator. We're doing the dirty work. We're trying to figure out when we can do a Roth conversion. So let's say we've got $500,000 worth of non-Roth IRAs, okay? And have you made any non-deductible contributions? No, we haven't made any non-deductible contributions. Amount you'd like to convert from traditional IRA to Roth IRA. What's cool about this calculator is you can do the full amount, a percentage, a dollar amount. Let's just say full amount because I'm running short on time. Filing status. Well, I'm married, filing jointly, so let's use that. Uh, estimated taxable income not including conversion amount. So what this is saying is what is your gross income before the Roth conversion? So let's just put in, whoop, where'd you go? Let's just say it's 20 and your current federal income. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Estimated tax income. I'm sorry. Your estimated tax, let's say 100,000 is the actual value. The percentage is 20%. Do you wish to include state taxes? Nope, we're in Florida. We're not going to do that. Number of years until you expect to take your first withdrawal. Let's say 10 years before we take our first withdrawal. And your risk profile, how do you want this money to grow? Let's just say moderate. Let's just act like I'm a 50-year-old. My wife says I act like a 50-year-old sometimes. All right. So here's what it's saying. Hypothetical account values at the time of your first withdrawal in 10 years. So if you left the money in the traditional IRA and it grew at a 4.92% clip, you would have $646,611 in 10 years when you took your first withdrawal. With the Roth IRA, you'd have $590,393 in 10 years after you did the conversion. The reason for that is you paid, you know, it's, it's, it, I'm sorry, the estimated future value of your converted assets is $56,000 less. And that's because you paid 144,000 in federal income tax. Now I would not recommend you doing a $500,000 Roth conversion. I would recommend more doing it in stages if possible. But what this, what this calculator allows you to do is say, okay, how much in taxes am I going to pay to do a Roth conversion? What would my asset look like if I did the conversion and I'm going to use it for income in 10 years? Like how much is going to be in there projected? And then how much would be in my IRA? Because essentially if you're working and your tax rate's here and you're going to be one of those people that retire and your tax rate goes to here, does it make sense to do the Roth conversion? And in some cases it does, in some cases it doesn't. So that's what I'm saying. Do the dirty work. Find out, does it make sense to do a Roth conversion? If you're retiring soon, you want to know these things. You want to know, if I'm going to retire in like two years, should I do Roth conversions to help me on taxes or should I not? Because if I do it and I find out that I'm in a low tax bracket, but I paid all those taxes when I was in a high tax bracket, a lot of times I'll tell people, why don't we wait till you retire and do the Roth conversions? Because one, you're not going to be on Social Security, so we don't have to worry about your Social Security unless you unless you claim it. But a lot of times you're not going to be on Social Security, so we're not going to our Social Security is not going to go on that 85 percent tax. You know, be taxed. The computation is not going to be at 85 percent. And two, our Medicare is at 65. We're not going to get our IRMA taxes. So why don't we do the conversions after we retire? So that's what the calculator helps you do. Another thing you want to do when you're talking about doing the dirty work, claiming Social Security. Understand when you're going to claim Social Security. Are you going to do it 62, 67, 70? We talked about that at the beginning of the video and on the last live stream. Last but not least, if you're retiring soon, you need to be thinking about this. And I have no licensing in this area, but I have lots of experience. You need to be thinking about estate planning. You need to think about your will. You need to think about your trust. You need to think about your power of attorneys. You need to think about your... Um, you know, your loved ones, because there will come a time when you will leave this earth 
And when you do that, um, there's going to be money left behind. There's going to be assets left behind. Houses, cars, grandma's jewelry, IRAs, trust accounts. And I can't tell you how many IRA accounts have transferred over to me from another advisor. And we've looked at those accounts and they haven't had any beneficiaries on them. We need to make sure we have beneficiaries. So do estate planning. It is very, very important. Get with an attorney. Get with a licensed attorney in your state. I don't care. If you live in Florida, you can contact me because I can get you in touch with somebody who's in Florida. If you live in another state, you can't find anybody, contact me. I've got a lot of contacts across America, and I can get you in touch with an attorney in your area. But you want to do estate planning. You want to have a will. You want to have a trust. You want to have a power of attorney documents. Listen, I've, I've had clients. I had a client pass away. James Lawrence says this. State planning is very important. I had a client pass away during COVID. She was a single lady. She lived in Newport, Ritchie, Florida, which is about 45 minutes north of me. And she was selling her house and her real estate, her real estate agent couldn't get a hold of her and went to her house and found her dead on her floor. Now, Sandy, that was her name, Sandy, didn't have any kids. She didn't have a husband. She didn't like her family. Okay. But she never put together an estate plan. And I told Sandy, we, she became a client during COVID. Sandy, you need to go visit the attorney. Sandy, you need a will. Sandy, you need a trust because you don't like your nieces and nephews and you don't want them to get your money. You want them to go to charity. You need a will. You need to, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. You, we don't know when the good Lord's going to call us home. You need an estate plan. It's very, very important. Last question. Dan Billings says this, how important is cash if you have a pension? Great question. If you've got a pension, that puts you at a, uh, a, a really optimal place because you've got pensions, social securities. I still think a cash buffer is important, but maybe not two years, maybe only six to 12 months, especially if your pension and your social security are covering all of your retirement income needs. Okay, Dan, thank you so much for that question. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching the live stream. If you have other questions, leave them in the comments. I'll make sure I look at them and answer them. Smash that like button. Appreciate y'all. God bless. Bye-bye.